online and were you the missionary? Nicholas. Thanks Nicholas. I'm using legacy technology. Um, right, we were looking at evangelism online and I suppose where I would start is saying that so few Christians engage online. I mean look how many people there are in this room. There should be an awful lot more of us. Um, and although there are some fantastic online Christian resources, how many Christians do you find in there? So if so few Christians are doing online faith, then how do we engage and reach out um, and have something meaningful to say to people who have got no concept of Christianity? Um, so we felt basically that the spiritual secular divide is as alive and kicking online as it is anywhere else. Um, we started to look at how we create community for those we evangelize to. So it's one thing to sort of have a passing comment and conversation with somebody or encounter somebody in the chat room and have a conversation about what next? And that was a thread that rang through, probably possibly came from me. Where do people go next? How do you actually create something that's longer term? How do you throw pebbles down the well and then hear the splash? Um, so how do you make personal connections beyond inquiries? Um, how do you connect the online world with the offline world? Um, what does the local church have to offer? And we talked about the fact that maybe the offline church has a great deal to learn from the online world. What is so attractive about online that offline isn't delivering? And how can offline church start to change to become more relevant, more exciting? And how can it link into online expressions of church or spirituality? Do offline churches need to have some kind of equipping to enable them to receive people who've come from an online inquiry place? We asked whether we needed to have virtual missionaries, people who are specifically empowered, perhaps paid, sent to the virtual world. Because um, we talked about whether or not you, I mean, can you bungee somebody into an online community and then bungee them out again, what's left behind? Um, and, and a good point was made that sometimes the people who are embedded in a community out there are not really the best people to be able to critique, examine, um, and transform their own community because they're so embedded in it. Um, you need somebody from the outside, but there has to be an understanding. You have to be sending people who are able to leave behind aspects of their own culture and absorb aspects of the new without you know, with retaining a foot in each camp and not being fully one or the other. Um, so we were looking at a role for apostolic figures online, initiators of Christian witness and community creators, who can then empower the indigenous people to run with it, but, but who remain closely in contact. Not necessarily an issue of control, but an an issue about community and about purpose. Um, we talked about things like where do you find people, you know, if YouTube and Flickr and Facebook are the places where huge numbers of people are congregating, is that necessarily the best place to get across your message um, in terms of quality? We did talk about the quality of content online, that you know, even some of the Christian stuff on YouTube needs to be much more attractive before it can be meaningful. Uh, we looked at um, the big gap there is between online inquiry, between seekers who are finding expressions of spirituality online and moving them into some kind of community, um, whether that's online or offline, and that then maybe needs to be shades of grey in between. Somebody made the point about we need to create online tribes where people can belong, where there are aspects of community that they can relate to, where there are things that they have in common. Um, because sometimes moving them into offline church could be the worst possible thing for them. We all know about that. Um, we talked about the top possibility for a network of online disciples, but then again, where is the organisation behind that? Where, how do you know where the quality discipling is being done? How do you know how to find these people, you know, if there are these resources? At the moment, it seems like so much is being done by individuals without a sending church or organisation, if you like, behind them. Just people who've got a really good heart investment in the world. So how do you know who they are, where they are, what they're offering? Um, we looked at the kind of spaces there are online, the alien spaces where Christianity is not welcome, spirituality is not welcome, where there are neutral spaces, and where there are spiritual seekers. So we talked about how do we create or get involved with existing spiritual, um, sp uh, sacred spaces. Um, so for example, it may be easier to have a conversation about spirituality where the pagans and the Wiccans are gathered, than to go in somewhere where you may not be very welcome and where issues of spirituality are not wanted. Um, we also talked about if there are no atheists in a foxhole and how, how useful could it be to create an opportunity for prayer online. So um, particularly I was drawn by um, an experience at St Pixels a couple of weeks ago, I attended the service there and I just couldn't believe how the congregation just started to participate when it came to the prayer time. It was just like a kind of Bruce Almighty moment with all these messages coming onto the screen, people praying. 
um, and that perhaps potential for prayer rooms online, giving people the opportunity to offer, to engage, would be something very meaningful. And that was the perfect time to stand up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. That sounds very uh, fruitful and uh, lots to pursue there. Last but not least, the group looking at community. Vex. I want to know whether you'll be able